Good evening. Welcome to the uh, November 17th, 2015 meeting of the Yukon City Council. If you would rise for the invocation by Councilman McCarran and remain standing for the flag salute, please. Lord, thank you for this wonderful day that you gifted to us. Thank you for the wonderful town that we live in today. May you guide us as we go forward through the evening and all of the rest of our lives. And may you be there as you always have for us to make us the wonderful nation that we really and truly are. In his holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Call the roll, please. Alberts? Here. Russell? Here. McCarran? Here. Ms. Maestrela? Here. Yonda? Here. Okay, at this time we have presentations and proclamations. We have a couple this evening. Uh, first, if uh, Larry uh, Mitchell and Pam Shelton would come meet me down front. <laughs> it's on. Okay, our proclamation reads, Whereas Small Business Saturday was created in 2010 to celebrate over 23 million small businesses in America that account for 54% of all U.S. retail sales. And whereas locally owned businesses play an important role in preserving downtown neighborhoods and promoting community events. And whereas independently owned small businesses boost the local economy by creating jobs, improving the quality of life for the area residents, and, su and supporting community funded fundraising activities. Excuse me. Now, therefore, I, John Alberts, Mayor of the City of Yukon, Oklahoma, do hereby proclaim November the 28th, 2015, as Small Business Saturday. And we urge our community residents and visitors to support Yukon's local merchants today and throughout the year, given my hand and seal this 17th day of November 2015. So you want to share with us a little information about? Uh, Shop Small Star Saturday, like you said, was started in 2010. It is uh, for all of our people to go and support our local businesses. Yukon's Best Main Street will be having Shop Small Saturday. We will have lots of things going on on Main Street, and we hope you come and shop with us. Larry, do you, anything? Just, just a quick comment mm -hmm. that uh, we think uh, supporting our merchants, Main Street merchants, is a very important part of economic development, and as we try to revitalize our downtown, we think this is a very important step to support the merchants in our downtown. Pam and Larry, I just want to thank you for your hard work and, and just the uh, improvement already and the things that we look forward to. And I, I agree with you. Our downtown is very important, and Highway 66 is just a great asset to us. And thank you so much for your, your hard work. Thank you. Oh, well, thank you. Now we have the uh, presentation for Storm Ready, for the Storm Ready community uh, by Rick Smith. And uh, Lori Adams, if you all would come forward. Rick, you're one of my most searched web pages, the uh, no application, so I love weather. So uh, if, you're, if you would uh, share with us uh, what information you can tell us about this, we'd really appreciate it. Thank you very much. It's an honor to be here this evening. Here this evening to recognize uh, the uh, city of Yukon as being a storm-ready community. Storm-ready is a program that was developed by the National Weather Service and our partners in emergency management back in Tulsa, Oklahoma, back in the mid-90s, and since then it's grown to be a national uh, project. What it does is recognizes the hard work that our emergency management partners do in the local communities to help a city like Yukon to be ready to deal with, with bad weather. Of course, we know, as recently as early this morning, poor Lori was up late last night, we kept her up, um, uh, watching the storms. We know that it's not a matter of if we're gonna get bad weather here, it's a matter of when. How much we're going to get one day is we're going to get snow and tornadoes the same day. Or we don't do earthquakes, but you know it's 
we can get it all. So it's important to be ready. And that's what storm ready is. Storm ready doesn't mean that UConn is storm proof. It doesn't mean that you're going to be able to withstand storms, but it means that you're better prepared. So the, the application process involves documenting that you have multiple ways to get information from the National Weather Service Office in Norman. It documents that you have multiple ways to communicate with us, to relay information to us, because we rely on information from the local community, and that there's local education efforts that go on. So uh, the National Weather Service and our local emergency management partners are, we, we work hand in hand during severe weather. So that's what Storm Ready is all about. So that's what we're here for this evening. Um, Frosty and Lori worked very, very hard on the application, and, and, uh, but we finally got it through and, uh, and uh, passed with flying colors. So congratulations. I got a, a certificate here. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you very much. Lori, thank you so much for your hard work. The next item on the agenda is the visitor section. That's an opportunity for people who would like to address the council about a non-agended item. If anyone's here this evening that would like to address the council, if they would come forward and announce their name at the podium. Mr. Shivers, does anyone turn no this evening? Okay. And seeing none, at this time we'll recess as the uh, Yukon City Council and reconvene as the YMA consent docket. This item is placed on the agenda so the Yukon Municipal Authority by unanimous consent can designate those routine items they wish to be approved by one motion. If an item does not meet with the appro for approval of all authority members, that item will be heard in regular order. The city manager recommends a motion to approve A, the minutes of the regular meeting of November the 3rd, 2015. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Discussion? Discussion? Call the roll, please. Smystra? Yes. McCarran? Yes. Yonda? Yes. Albert? Yes. Russell? Yes. The next item is 2A, and that's consider approving a joint rezoning application for the Yukon Crossing City Hall Plaza from C3 Restricted Commercial District to Urban Gateway Overlay Supplemental District as recommended by the General Manager and Executive Director of YIDA. Do I have a motion? Motion to approve. A second. If we have some questions about yeah, this. Second, and then we'll discuss it. Second. Okay. Uh, discussion, ladies? Well, I'd like to say something. I, uh, we bought this property um, to build a new city hall, and I just feel like this rezoning is very important uh, that we move forward. Uh, that way it gives us authority over the, the uh, property, and then we can control you know, what goes there. And I just think it's a, in a uh, due to the fact that we have outgrown our city offices and that a lot of the offices are in disrepair, that it's a very important part of a um, project moving forward. Other discussion? Mr. McCarran? Well, I, I'm just uh, I'm wondering if we aren't getting the cart before the horse. Uh, that's my concern here is that, you know, we've not really moved forward with you know, uh, separating any of the property out for sale yet. Uh, I know that until we probably get to that point, uh, also looking at the new city hall and the financing and everything that surrounded it was a concern to me. I've, I've mentioned that before, but but for me, the uh, the part is, is is that I guess I'm at the point where I don't see enough of the overall plan uh, in my view to to, to change, to go in and, and re, you know, resegment it uh, from C3 to, to the urban overlay at this, at this point uh, until we see, you know, certainly a lot more 
uh, of, of the layering and particularly the financing? We are not, Mr. Mayor, by your leave. Sure. We are not approving anything other than, we're not approving a financing plan. We're not approving a construction plan. We are not approving anything but one of the steps we need in order to better prepare the RFP, RFQ, in order to make this piece of property more desirable to developers. Without this being done, they don't know, developers will not know what they're buying. So we're trying to get it to the point that they know what they're buying. And part of that is the zoning that they're buying into. Mr. Russell? Yeah, I'm along the same line here. I just question we don't have enough information on this yet. I question, I would like to see more detail of what's going to take place across the whole board, what we're able to do with it, what it's going to run. Um, <clears throat> I'm not sure we're ready for this. Should this be tabled or? Well, it, it ties our hands, Mr. Councilman. We cannot prepare our RFP, RFQ in an appropriate manner to maximize what the value of the property is around it. We, uh, this particular zoning is fully laid out in the material in your packet as to what it does. <coughs> and um, I would encourage you to, uh, to pass this item. It is exclusive of any other project. This is the only thing you're voting on. If you're trying to mess several things into one project, that's not what we're doing tonight. Anything else? We are approving making an application. That's what you're asked to do. As our would zoning. You, would you? I, well, I, I mean, I'm, I'm going to say, I, as I read this, and I just say here, the Urban Gateway Overlay Supplemental District is recommended by the general manager and the executive director of Vita. Has that already been done? Because when I look through this, there's a similar item on the Yeta agenda. It is a for joint her. application between YMA and Yeta for this. Well, I mean, it's saying right here that it's already been recommended by that. No, and no. Um, it is recommended by me as the general manager of Yada. Okay. And it is recommended by the executive director of, of the Economic Development Authority. So that's Ray. Then is that? No, Larry? that's Larry. Right. Larry, okay. Now, the uh, the authority <coughs> will have this item on their agenda for Thursday and consider it at their meeting on Thursday. But I'm I guess what I'm trying to say does that not also then wind up as a moot point in the sense that if we pass it here they would that need it that you know why would it even have to go before you well, because that it's, point a joint, it, it's a joint application between the two bodies what's yeah. the purpose and of the joint the, application? The, the, the concept yeah. the concept here is that the city purchased the 45 acres of 41 acres the one mm -hmm. of land that's correct half half of that property would be set aside a reserve for the city hall okay which would be under the authority and review of the Yukon Municipal Authority. The other half of the site, and you have a, a very uh, rough drawing of how that <coughs> lays out, the other half of the site would be um, managed um, and marketed by the Economic Development Authority. <coughs> now the details of City Hall, the only detail that we need at this point is to know where that 20 acres is going to set. We think we have a fair idea we need to finish up on our survey work and that sort of thing to define those boundaries. But once those boundaries are set, we can proceed with uh, offering the property for sale, the balance of the property for sale, to private development companies prior to any construction of a city hall. So, so we really, I shouldn't say we aren't concerned at this point about 
um, the financing or the constructed plans for City Hall, but it's not necessary to have all those details in order to market the property to private development companies. All they are interested in knowing is that a City Hall is going to be located on that site. But doesn't it, but this zone, rezoning gives us more control as a city to control the area. Yes, if you, if you look at the concept of the smart code, the smart code concepts are that, that you're trying to encourage mixed use development, which gives the developer more flexibility, gives them greater density. Smart growth is essentially design oriented versus your commercial, your conventional zoning, which is land use oriented. And so the developers know that they have more flexibility. You know, as a council, that whatever goes in there commercially is going to be compatible with the neighborhood. It's going to be compatible with City Hall. Uh, you have more control over the design for uh, amenities. Uh, you have the opportunity to negotiate with the developers over improvements or amenities that you want to see on the site. Currently, under conventional zoning C3, if you sold it as C3, developer has a long list of uses that he can put, he or she can put on that site, and it doesn't require any review because it's already zoned. If he meets, he meets the conditions of the zoning, then he can put in a gas station or amusement park or a bus station, and it's allowed under C3, so he can do it, proceed and do it, and it doesn't doesn't necessarily fit in with the neighborhood, doesn't necessarily fit in with City Hall. So that's the idea, uh, is to get this in place so that when we go and offer the property to private development companies, they have an idea of what the expectation level is from the city. Uh, the other thing I'd like to point out here is that I got a call today from uh, an attorney in Kansas City he said, We're, I'm representing a company that's interested in Yukon. And I said, that's great. Uh, what can I help you with? He said, uh, well, I can't tell you much about the company, but I want to know what kind of incentives you're going to offer <laughs> or what, a, what kind of incentives are in place. So, so if you develop the RFQ, RFP, and you issue it without not knowing some of these details, the very first questions are going to be, what's it zoned? What, how can I use the property? Uh, what kind of local incentives will the city provide to me? And based on those answers, we may get bids, we may not. But we'd like to try to answer as many of those questions as we can before we start the process. Anything else, Mr. Russell? This is, <clears throat> if I heard this correctly, though, but this will be guaranteeing someone that a city hall is going there or when it's going there? It does not guarantee when. It's just simply saying that half the site is being reserved for a city hall. Now the expectation is that at some point in the future a <coughs> city hall would be built there. It doesn't, it doesn't define the size of the city hall. It doesn't define the structure of the city hall at all. It just reserves half of that space for a future building site. And I, I didn't hear the answer on this. Shouldn't it, this went to the zoning before it went to us? No, this is the application yeah, to zoning, proceed with the zoning. Yes, this is, the, this is just the application. So we would have to go through the uh, notice requirements, notify all of adjacent property owners, have a hearing before the Planning Commission, and the Planning Commission's recommendations would then come back to the City Council. Mr. McCarran? I, I'm still just, uh, I, I mean, I'm always nervous when you go in and, you know, once you change zoning on something, that's pretty much forever. <laughs> Not necessarily. You know, well, I mean, you can, generally speaking, you can go uh, up in the zoning where it's more restrictive than you can uh, over the years. I mean, I spent a little time on the Planning Commission, so uh, I, you know, and, and I'm familiar with the process that you, when you get to a certain point, and I, I don't necessarily disagree with the fact that it's, uh, an opportunity for us to present the property, you know, in a, in a better light to developers. But I don't at this point think that I, I'm just not comfortable with changing the zoning with what we know so far. With well, are you comfortable? Are you comfortable uh, selling the property with its current zoning? I haven't seen what's there yet to sell. Senator. 
package. I've seen no, I've seen the four or the division of nope. the individual pieces. No, what I'm saying is. But I mean, do we have any any inclination of all at all of people who would be coming this way? Yes. Uh, yeah. Yes, we have talked to development groups that are are interested in one or more. Uh, some of them may be interested in the residential. Some may be interested in the commercial. But remember, under C3 zoning, you can't you can't uh, approve any you can't uh, mix them residential. You can't right mix now. the uses, right. um, and and so you don't you don't necessarily have that benefit. Uh, if well, you without having C3. you know without having some reasonable information along those lines, that's why I'm struggling with it. That's, is okay. is that if you know if we knew some of the targets and the things that were you know hanging out there maybe that would you know make me feel better about it but I right now I don't yeah well that's I'm, that's I'm, the purpose of the art we to, is to give you those it's names here it's my it's here here's I'd like to express my concerns and then we can address my concerns start with the idea that this is going to be a tiff that's I not have on the tape I yes and I understand that but I would like I think what the gentlemen are saying and what I think that I would like to see is I would like to better understand the overall proposal I mean, we're in front of Yida. I mean, last time when we were in Yida, we, Leslie came and bachelor and spoke mm -hmm. to us about the TIF. Um, I've not heard anything from her, John Williams, the financing. I mean, <clears throat> I, I would like to understand, I understand rezoning. I, I'm not sure that, that, that this council necessarily object, objects to the rezoning of it, but I'm not, I'm not ready to move forward. And I made this known the other night. I want to know this time, before we go forward with a project, where we're headed. Exactly. That's what. And I'm that's saying. I want to know. I want some details about the project, and I think that you can tell a developer that you have a very supportive council, and I'll go on the record, and I think all these men and women up here would support a developer that came to town and said, you know what, we're not going to get involved in this project unless it's C3, because then we would understand that a developer is going to come and they're going to put this, this, and this, or this is their overall plan. But what what I'm concerned about is is I, from <coughs> from the other night forward. I want some more detail about what we're doing. And this is a general, so we're going to rezone it. Fine. What if we don't rezone it? I mean, you tell me because it's going to be rezoned to C3 that that's going to cause it to instantly sell. That's a, not any more true than leaving it zoned the way that it is, Larry. No, I'm not telling you that. I'm telling you that, that under the smart code overlay, you have more flexibility. Developers have more flexibility. They have more latitude in how they develop okay. the site. You also have you also have control over the compatibility issue and design issues when you look at that development versus what you're trying to do with the city hall project. That's I, what I'm saying. I need to know how it's going to be financed, the project. I want to know how it's okay. going to be paid for. I've heard TIF. I'm not in favor of a TIF. I've made that clear the other night in the planning session. I'll go on the record tonight and tell you that I'm not in favor of a TIF. If I'm not in favor of a TIF, that's a major hurdle that you and, and Mr. Bottom need to get over in order to get there. Either I need to be yeah. convinced, I'm not the only vote on here, but I will do my dead level best to, per to persuade you all to find some financing other than a yeah. TIF. Right. And if TIF is where you're hanging your hat on this deal, then that's a problem. So but until we can get the financing figured out and figure out where this project's headed, I don't see the point in rezoning it. Now that doesn't mean that we can't do it the next meeting or the meeting after that. Is all we're doing is encouraging you to come forward with a complete plan. I don't want to piecemeal it together. The last time we were here, and I don't, I mean this, the last time we were here, and I'll bring it up again, is when we built a, a, a road out there by the hospital. We were led to believe, I'll speak for myself, I was led to believe we were given a piece of paper and we laid it on the table and said, this is where a particular grocery store is going and you can take that to the bank. Mm -hmm. That didn't happen, guys. I want, I want some, I want a plan. I want to support this project. I'm not opposed to a new city hall. I'm not in favor of, of tiffing the money in order to get it there. I think there are other ways. I think we need to be more creative. I think we need to look at other sources. I want to see an overall plan. I want to see a developer. If that's a hot piece of property, there's got to be a developer somewhere in the world that would come and talk to you two gentlemen about this, and then you can bring that information to us, and we can move it forward. And, and we have done that. And who, we, who we, is that is what we're, we're telling you, that we have had conversations with various developers who are interested in either residential, commercial. They may not be interested in the total site, but they're going to want to know what the ground rules are before they get into any serious they've got negotiation. The I, I think that w I, I, they've got my backing, I'll tell you that. And I'll but, only be here as oh, the mayor for another three or four months, but right. they've got my backing. All right. I, I just want to ask a very general <coughs> question. 
How do you get commitments from a developer when they don't know what the ground rules are? How do you get commitments from the city council when we don't know what the ground rules are? We're trying to lay those ground rules out. You're going to rezone it, but for what purpose? Who's going to come and build there? Who's going to come and buy it? We're, we're rezoning it for the purpose of protecting your investment. I'm glad to ask Ms. Yonda to amend her motion to table this so you can bring us some more information. I'd like to hear from Leslie about the TIF, whether she thinks that's the proper way to do this. I think that that's the cornerstone of this whole thing. If she can come and convince us that TIF is the way to do that, that would be a, a huge step forward. Mm -hmm. it, because if TIF is not the way to do that, then we have a financing issue that the city hall is not likely to be built anytime soon. Mm -hmm. I think that's the, that's the first step, is how is the thing going to be funded? I think w what it's zoned is irrelevant until you figure out how to pay for it. That's, well, that's the, purpo the purpose, I don't disagree with you other than to say the purpose of doing the rezoning was be able to get our baseline so that we could do an RFQ and see what the interest level would be. The, the issues here are that if you don't have all, of, all those answers in place, then it's very difficult to get anyone to submit proposals to you. I need more information. Okay, that's, that's fine. I'd like to, I would ask Ms. Young well, to amend I'm sorry. Well, go ahead, here. John. I, you know, I guess one of my questions, too, would be is if the developers, the people that you're actually speaking to, could have the opportunity to say, well, would this uh, property be more attractive if it was smart coded? You know, those answers could be, I guess, a part of the RFQ. Uh, when is there not any way to property. obligate people? I mean, it no. seems like when you negotiate, they want to obligate the city to all these things. Right. Are, are right. we not able to obligate the developers? And these negotiations, see, the part of the problem is, is we don't know anything about these nego negotiations. And just like tonight, you come here and say, well, there's someone out there. Well, there's someone out there that has expressed a general interest. Yeah. Some of it is for commercial, some of it's for residential. <coughs> and so the idea was to give, by rezoning the property, you would have the maximum flexibility so that when you sit down with these development companies, they would have an understanding of what was possible and it would protect the city given the fact that you are planning to make a major investment in that property and you want to make sure that, that what goes in around you is desirable. Okay. But the major investment that we're going to make on that is the city hall, true? Yes, that's correct. And the proposed financing for the city hall right now is a TIF, true? Not necessarily. That's the, where we're leaning. You've changed your mind. And no, I have not changed my mind. That is one of the considerations. Well, as a, our, our planning session the other night, it was the only consideration. So what other options? It, it was the consideration we talked about. It's the only one we talked about, but there's other things. Well, see, there. that's part of the, guys, I mean, we need to know. But we're not talking about funding the city hall. We're talking no, about rezoning. I understand that. But if you can't fund it, if you can't build the city hall because the TIF is not the appropriate way to fund it, then what we've rezoned it for and led these people to believe won't come to fruition. No, that's not true. Then how are you going to build a city hall if you don't have the funding for it? Well, part of the, part of the funding that comes for financing city hall is selling the land. Okay. And that, Mr. Bob and selling, yet, and selling this land. That's, that's a major portion of that project. Okay. So, so Without being able to sell the land, you obviously don't have any revenue to start building at City Hall. So that's part of it. I would ask Ms. Yonda to amend her motion to table it for, and provide us, I'd like to hear if TIF, what are the funding options? If it's not TIF, what are the other options? I'd like to hear from, has Leslie been a part of this conversation about TIF? Is she in favor of it? Yes, Does she's she been helping us draft the, the RFQ, the RFP. Does she We've believe that the TIF is the right way to go? She believes that, that that is an option, provided that we sell the land at this location and that we uh, market and sell the balance of the property that we're not going to use for City Hall at the new location. It, all, it would all fit together. TIF would not fund the entire project. But selling the land plus the TIF would, would give you the uh, budget you need to do the project. That's one way. That's one way. I still would like, I would like to have some more conversation about this before we do anything. I don't think that the zoning, if, from what 
me personally, what I'm trying to say to you guys is I need to know more about the project. I'm not offended by the zoning, but there's no reason to move the zoning forward <laughs> if we don't know about the overall project. That's what I'm trying to say. I, I understand that. The, the only purpose in doing the rezoning was to be able to answer those questions so that when we went out with an RFQ, the developers would have some idea of what we're trying to accomplish with the project. That's, that's the only well, but the I, reason. I think the council's saying I to you that we want to know about the project even before these potential that's, that's developers fine. do. That's fine. Yeah, that's I your prerogative. I not go any further till we get some more information with us what we really that's, that's <clears> fine. trying to say. I, I don't feel comfortable going a step further till I know I, I understand what that. our funding is going to be, how this funding is going to be. Is it a, another tax? Because I'm not, I'm not. No, it wouldn't be all. another tax, I don't believe. I mean, that's an option, that's, obviously. No, that's that's fine. I, I, I would like to convey to the council that, that I believe that the overlay is the best option for the city as far as land use and development of the of the site. That could actually be a part of your discussion, though, with anybody that you're talking to, could it not? Well, yes, but they're not going to do anything. They're not going to submit a proposal or really talk seriously about, about doing a project until they know what the ground rules are. But none of this discussion up here has been anything to do with the way that you want to zone it. No. So which would leave you to believe that I think that the council supports the zoning. What we are talking about is the overall project. Right. I understand so that. So I don't think, I, I think that the, from what I've heard, and I may be wrong, Ms. Ms. Yonda made the motion. She, she right. must be in favor of it. I've told you that's two votes. So, okay. I mean, I've, I've got to believe that the zoning is not the issue. The, over, the issue is the overall project. Understood. So, I, are you interested in amending your motion to table it? Or I guess, do, do we amend, amend it to table it, Mike? To table it, it'll come back next regular meeting. If you postpone it indefinitely or continue it, it will come back whenever it's brought back up. Can we continue, we continue it for a month? Can you guys have us some of this information? If we could get some questions together and have this information to us and maybe could Leslie come and talk to us or John William, whoever's the final, sure. help us to understand? Those are the questions sure. that I, I I have a whole list here that I've written. Yeah. I mean, if we continue to well, and, and and keep in mind that if you if you do move in the direction of a, a proposing or thinking about a TIF district, there's a review process that is involved in in looking at the project, developing a project plan, developing a project budget. That is a review committee that takes that assignment and develops project plan and budget for the for the site. And that's a that's about a four month process. Okay. Okay. Thank well, you. I, would you consider amending your motion to table it for thirty days? Or till the second meeting in December? Okay, I'll amend my motion. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Discussion? Discussion? Call the roll please. Alberts? Yes. Russell? Yes. Smystra? Yes. Yonda? Yes. McCarran? Yes. Next item is 3A, and that's consider approving resolution YMA 2015-07, a resolution providing preliminary approval and declaring the intent of the Yukon Municipal Authority in connection with the issuance of, of not with the issuance, it, it says that with the issuance of not to exceed 45 million of its revenue bonds or notes for the payment of reimbursement of expenditures for the Yukon Sports Complex. Do I have a motion, please? Motion to approve. I have a second. I have a second. Can I second it? Yes, sir. I second it. Discussion? Ladies, discussion? Gentlemen? Yes. Where did I miss something here when this? You're not committing to anything this evening except being reimbursed. When this all came about, was there not a backer that was doing this? We still have to, f whether it's a lease purchase, a bond, which it has turned out to be, 
or anything else, we still have to approve the indebtedness. Do we have any idea at this point where this park, is that finishing it? And what is that finishing or is it? This actually finishes, uh, not that we're discussing because that is not the motion or the agenda item on the table. But as a point of information, the, uh, the phase one of the park includes all of the central park down the middle of the park as well as all of the uh, soccer field and the access and the infrastructure and all of that that goes along with that portion of the park. Yet to be constructed in phase two would then be the softball and baseball fields. Uh, also in this are the ponds, the irrigation systems, all that kind of thing. But what we're looking at tonight is a way to get the city reimbursed for expenses that we have had and will have throughout the project. So at this point, we believe these are going to be bonds, is that correct? At this point, yes. That's what our financial advisors are telling us. And it also means that the $45 million is not the total cost of the... No, no, not. That is phase one, anticipated phase one cost. Does that include the uh, community center? That includes the <laughs> field house in the middle of the um, park? Yes, all of the park down the middle. I guess I need some explanation because you said Mr. Russell asked a question and you said that that's not what's on the agenda tonight. What is on there is the reimbursement. This is the reimbursement resolution. She had to leave. Permanently? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Then I don't understand. What okay. happened was the Yukon Municipal Authority borrowed money and purchased the property. And so this says, this resolution, from my understanding, speaking with Mr. Williams, is an IRS requirement that when you issue those bonds, it says we intend to issue the bonds. It's not saying we're issuing the bonds, but we intend at some point in the future to issue those bonds. Those bonds, the proceeds from those bonds are to go to, for the purposes of the bonds, would be for capital improvements and it could actually be for the purchase of the land. But this resolution is required for the proceeds of the bonds to come back and reimburse the city for some of the costs that the city has already incurred, like the purchase of the land. Uh, if it were done through a lease purchase, this resolution would not be necessary the city or the authority would be reimbursed for the cost of the property through that agreement. And the property would actually be sold to the, the management company. They would go and they would reimburse the city through that by purchase. The city then would enter into a lease purchase agreement with the developer to lease purchase a, a fully completed uh, soccer complex. This just opens the door for us to be able to issue bonds to finance it. And all it says is that if we do issue bonds, we intend to, and if we do, some of the proceeds of those bonds can be used to reimburse the city for some of the engineering costs, the survey costs, the land purchase, uh, those kinds of expenses. Okay. I assume that's significantly less, however, than $45 million. Yeah, right? why is the, 45. that's a number that's close to what it would cost. That you. says, what that's saying is, is that the authority intends to issue a bond or, or issue a revenue bond. And in the future, when it issues that bond, the bond is not going to exceed $45 million. Okay. Is there a math problem? How did you come up with the number $45 million? I didn't. Is there a math? Because I've looked through the material and I don't see that there's a math problem that, that helps me understand $45 million. From the original engineer's estimate of that particular portion of the park that we're talking about, it was anticipated that the land cost, the engineering cost, all the fees plus the cost of the park would be somewhat less than $45 million. 
Okay, so then I, it seems to me then that we're setting ourselves up to pay for the park with bonds, and I thought we told which would be tax, the people's money. Is that right? Bond money. It's coming out of existing revenue. Okay. They're, they're sales tax or, okay. or revenue. But I mean, I mean it's not our, a new tax. As I understood it, our promise to the community was is we weren't going to use the sales tax to build the park. No, okay. sir, we weren't going to raise taxes to build the park. We're not raising tax. Well, you're taking the increasing sales tax, which raises itself. But that's not a, it's still the same rate. Okay, so what's, there's no number to break down the 45 million. Where's the, where's the, so So when you tell you what, John, I tell you what, we won't build the park. Now that's, that's where we are. Now that Grayson, really that's is. not. It's no. It what really we're is. being encouraged to do is think outside the box on some of this stuff. Well, we would like a little explanation. Okay. I know this is not comfortable for any of us that are sitting here tonight. Well, but I think that's part of the problem is is the communication maybe has not been as good as what we've liked it to be. And the point has not been made privately, so we're here tonight to tell you in person that we need your cooperation. We've had public meetings in this very room. No, sir, your cooperation, not the public. Your cooperation, sir. That's what we're here to tell you. I've tried, and I think some other people here have tried. Tonight we're here to say we as a council have been inundated by the community, and we want to build a park, we want you to help us do it, but we need to understand, when you send a $45 million number in front of our council, we need to break it down. Okay. Now, to say that you're going to go sell the land or whatever, it's no, sir. We're asking you to manage it and take care of us and provide us the information so that we can answer the questions that are posed to us by the citizens. And I'm sorry, and I apologize to anyone here. But I, I can't tell, I could not tell a person from anything that I've read where that $45 million number come, came from. And right now you can't tell me either, except sure, for it's generally the number that was given to you by the developer plus Which the land the cost. But it's you. a rounded off number. We're asking for it to be broken down. What does that get us out there? What is it going to build us? What, the number of fields it's going to build? How many square feet is the complex going to be out there? What kind of turf is going to cover it? I mean, that's the kind of information that we're being asked. And as soon as I have it available, I'll give it to you. So Olson's not providing you any of that information? Yes, they provided us an engineer's estimate. Okay, but that's not in our information. That is not what you're being asked to vote on. Then what are we being asked? I, I don't so that we can get reimbursed under the IRS rules. But the reimbursement is for, how, Mike, remind me, how much did we pay for the property? 5.8. Okay, so $4.8 million, that's 10% of $45 million. Why such the big number? Why don't we ask for $5 million in a bond? But the other part that I have is, I mean, I was under the impression that we were not going to issue bonds to pay for the park. We had not anticipated it until, until our financial advisors. That includes Bank of Oklahoma Securities, John Williams, Key Bank, what, where are they, why aren't they here tonight to help us understand this? They advised us that bonds would be a better way to go. Cheaper cost of issuance, long term. But that's a different, that is a substantial change from what we voted, what, it's a substantial change from why I voted to buy this piece of property and build this park. Because we were under the impression that it was not going to be done, done with bond money. Is that right? You, you were, we were going to finance it at the time with certificates of participation. Okay, what is this? That is the financial information okay. related to certificates of participation. Okay, that's not bond money at that time. Not that's bond what money. that's what we were given. That's right. Okay, but so that is a substantial. To consider a bond. Then that's where I don't understand. Maybe someone else can ask. What I don't you're. 
So this is a bond. I guess, yeah, the opening no, 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 question no, no, there is no, what no, is. No, 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 no. No, it's not a bond. No, no, no. It's no. the authority. So who gets to decide it, it, that we're going to make a $10 million draw off this? You don't. You, no, 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 no. All this says is that at some point in the future, the authority may vote to issue a bond. Then why would I don't understand that, Mike? Why, why would we? Doing this? Why, why we would doing we do it? that? I mean, at what point in the future? You, you, you don't have to do that. I'm not saying that. If, if, but why would all I'm we? I'm saying That's is, if you do issue a bond, and you want some of the proceeds, if you do issue a bond at some point in the future. Can't be over forty-five million dollars, but at some point in the future. But then, why are we talking about it tonight if we're not going to do this anything? Has, well, you don't. If you don't pass the resolution prior to issuing the bond, it's my understanding reimbursed. that the proceeds from the bond cannot be used to reimburse. <coughs> okay. Well, why do we have to? Why does it have to be forty-five million dollars if we're only asking to be reimbursed somewhere around five million? No, it's, no, no, that's the bond. But why do a $45 million bond? That's my question. What's the purpose? It's not to exceed $45 million. That decision, it, it, if you read it, I believe it says an amount not to exceed $45 million. Yeah, I mean, that's And so that's just an upper limit. That's a ceiling. If you decide to issue a bond for $20 million, then we still get reimbursed. If so you decide to issue no bonds, then we don't get reimbursed, at least from the, the bonds, because there wouldn't be any. Okay. So how is a bond issued? What? So if we, if we pass this tonight, before any bond is issued, what steps have to take place? For a bond to issue? Yes. Well, you'd have to come back and we'd have to go through that whole process, another resolution authorizing the borrowing. We'd have to go through another ordinance uh, declaring that the, the borrowing would not exceed our debt limits. We would have to go through the city council action and, and a, a, a authority action, again, then, like we do. Then I don't understand the point of doing this tonight if we're not going to do anything. I don't know the timing of it, to be honest with you, and, and how much in advance that this has to be passed, or if there is a, a, a time. You know, I, I'm not. I, what I'm saying is, I don't know that there's anything, that there's any fire under this. Okay. It needs to be done. It has to be done now. I don't know. Because that's what maybe John Williams or the Bank of Oklahoma could help under. I don't understand why we need to do this. Did John Williams say that that he we should do this us. at this time? He sent it to us. Why, though, Donna? That's what I don't understand. Why? We're not going to spend. We don't have forty-five million dollars worth of reimbursements. We're getting. We would get reimbursed. I mean, but what it sets us up to do, it appears to me, is to reimburse the city for paying for the park, mm -hmm. for some construction costs, those type of things. And that's what bothers me. Is I don't want to. If you say that we need to reimburse the city for five million dollars worth of property, that's a different conversation. To me, this looks like a $45 million line of credit to build a park, and that I have a problem with. And I don't know that in the future it just is an amount not to exceed. And it could be that the, it may be permissible under IRS rules to issue a $7 million bond to reimburse the city. And that would cover, this would cover it. And that's the, the, ulti the ultimate amount of the bond in the future is not determined by this document except for the ceiling. Well, have, have we not already said, though, that, that we're going to exceed that at some point in time if we build the entire facility? I don't know. Well, I mean, that was the discussion just a minute ago that it was yeah. going to go beyond $45 million. I, I, that's why I've been confused about it a lot of it, too. I, I guess why well, I'm confused, and I might be naive on something, but I, when I voted <clears throat> to approve buying the lot, I thought we had investors. Now I'm gathering that we don't, and that's we why. We still I, do. We can still do it that way. It's just that, and those investors are still available. But our financial advisors, Richard, have told us that bonds today, in today's rate environment, is a cheaper way to go in the long term. So we do have options. And the bonds would be equivalent to COPs? Is that what you're saying? Or they Certificates of participation. Participation, right. And those are what the banks buy That's right. to supply us with the money. Right. 
can't. I, I, <clears throat> I still don't understand why then it needs to be $45 million. What does the $45 million tie to? Ties to uh, what we think the reimbursements are going to be plus phase one of the, of the park. Okay, so that's the cost of the park. So that's the potential to issue $45 million worth of bonds to pay for the park, the construction of the park. Phase one, yes. Well, I mean, you, I mean, you probably hate me for this, but I'd like the people from, I'd like John Williams to come and explain that, and I'd like the Bank of Oklahoma so we can explain, because I, this document that I saved led me to believe, like Richard said, that we were going to do this a different way. Now, I don't think that it would be prudent to be hard-headed over the matter if it's going to save the city millions of dollars in order to do that. But I, that's, again, Grayson, some of the information. I mean, you all live this. I mean, you are a smart man. Larry, you guys do this all the time, and we appreciate what you do, and this is a hard night for us to sit here and, and bust you in the heads over this. I won't speak for these people. I don't understand it. Hmm. And I still right now am not 100% clear. So that's what, and when I put pressure on you, I don't want you, I want to build the park, and I want a new city hall, but I also want to be able to make, I want to be able to explain to my friends or my people at church what's going on and how, so that's, so right now, the way that I hear this is, is basically you want us to pass this resolution in order to set aside or, or to dedicate the potential that we're going to we're going to pay for the park the park with bonds and i need to hear i need to i need this is the first thing that we were given and i'd like that to be contrasted with what the bank of oklahoma and the bank of oklahoma they've done us a great job and i think that they're but i think those are the people that need to come and john williams i mean come and explain it to us what we're discussing is whether or not we meet the IRS rules so we can be reimbursed. I understand that. Does that have to be done tonight? I cannot answer that. I am led to believe because John sent it to us, and he's been a part of all the discussions leading up to this point, that it has a, and all it would do is push off the financing of the start of the park. Because What's going to happen is, is if we issue, if we pass this resolution, then we're going to go to work building the park using this money because we're going to start issuing no, bonds. Sir. No, sir. We do not have that authority. We don't. Ha we have not. It'd have to come to the council. And you'd have to pass have a to resolution and an ordinance. Yeah. All we're doing tonight is saying that mm -hmm. if we use a bond, if we use a bond. Under IRS rules, we have to pass this resolution in order to be reimbursed for expenses we have occurred, incurred prior to construction. The uh, process would be essentially the same as we went through this summer with those refundings. Yep. Remember when uh, John was here and Bill and yeah, when they and that's what I'm saying. They came two or three times and explained it to yeah, us, Mike. That's and the that thing. Is, and, and they would do that again prior to the issuance of any bond. This is not issuing a bond at all. That that whole process, we'd have to go through that whole process all over again for this. So if we pass this res so if we pass this resolution tonight. It allows us to come into compliance with some IRS regulation. Yeah. Well, IRS no, 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 no. If the resolution is passed tonight and we go through that whole process with Chris Gander or Bill Strecker, John Williams, if we go through that whole process and you decide that this is the way you want to finance the park and you decide that you want to issue bonds, after that whole process, then once the bonds are sold, some of the proceeds can be used to reimburse the city for the costs that they've already incurred. So if we don't pass this tonight, then we're, we're risking a potential problem with the IRS? No, because okay. I don't know that for a fact, because I don't know that there's any fire or deadline <coughs> or this has to be done 90 days before, you know, I don't think that, there, that, that, that that's the issue. But if I think do, it just kind of gets the process started 
and they, this is under our belt now and that's away and, and they don't have to worry about reimbursement issues anymore. They can move forward answering your questions, answering the council's questions. John William, Chris Gander, Bill Stricker all come up here and go through that whole process like we went through the summer. Like the summer we went and then we would work within this $45 million limit that we're setting tonight. Can't go over that. With but okay, but we'll if have if to it's go. on the agenda now, and, if, and then if we do vote to issue bonds, this has to be passed prior to issuing the bonds in order to, for us to be reimbursed, right? Mm -hmm. By the council. So the authority, yes. So would it come back before the authority? Yeah. And then? Just like we did, just like we did this summer. Both of them. Questions? Comments? I, you know, I think I'd like to hear something from Mr. Williams prior to this, if he sent it to us. You know, I, you know, we were so genuinely good about doing that one, the re refinance process, and that was over $3 million, and here we're looking at 45. I think, you know, having John come in certainly would, would ease my mind a lot more. I agree. Can we table this to the next meeting and have John come in if there's a problem? We could have an emergency meeting and have an emergency meeting and pass it if there was an issue and we could come to the emergency meeting. It, 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 it would be, it would be a special, special meeting. But special yeah. meeting. A special meeting, yes. I mean, I just think, just so you guys understand, I mean, this is, and I'm sure it is for you all too. I mean, I mean, this is intimidating. This is 45 million. I can't even imagine how much money that is. It's our yearly budget. No, that's it's not my yearly budget. No. It might be my wife's shopping budget, but it's not my yearly budget. But that's, I mean, that's why this is the most. Like I said before, it's a very exciting time to be in Yukon, and it is. And I think that great things are going to happen. But as we grow and go forward, I mean. I, I've only got two more years, Grayson, that you got to put up with me. But as a lawyer, there's some of these times when I have to, I mean, I, I don't completely understand. And I think that there's a lot of the community that doesn't completely understand. And I have fielded more calls in the last 30 days over the City Hall project and the, and the park project than, than in the entire time that I've been on the council. And I can't answer, I can't answer those questions. So that's, I mean, I'm not here. I am not an impediment. I have I have prayed and fought and bragged about this park long before you came here, since Jim was here. I've been on the park board, I mean, with lots of people, and, and I mean, I want a park. Someone came to me at the soccer game the other day and said, John, how long do you really think that it might be before that park's built? I said, you might see dirt turned in January, and it might be five years. I said, I don't know. But I said, I hope it's sooner rather than later. But I mean, I... I and I'm sorry. I I need John and I need the bank to come here and explain why I bought off on this thing, thinking that there was a way to do this where we didn't have to issue bonds. But if it's more Thanks. economically prudent now to do it a different way, then I would just like. To know. From the very <coughs> beginning, I think my very first comment was. It's debt. I understand. It's just called different things. Well, I think, okay, we'll not argue over semantics. I mean, that's we're not getting anywhere. I, we have a park built. So, I, again, Ms. Yonda, I'd ask you to amend your motion to table this to... <coughs> I think it would be... This needs to be postponed. It would be postponed if you table it. It really comes up the first meeting in December. If you postpone it, then it comes up whenever somebody wants to bring it up. Well, but if there's an IRS issue, I mean, we, I mean, that's a that's and a so housekeeping matter. That that if there, if there yeah. is a special meeting, they can come to the special meeting. You can postpone it till next. Till but you just, postpone what it. you can do is postpone. Okay, and then if you want to have a special meeting next week. 
you it can. can the issue can be brought up if we need to but otherwise can't we just set this on the next meeting can't can it we can get John be. and the well, bank? What you could do is postpone it, but ask that it be <coughs> brought up on the, on the agenda. First available agenda. Yeah. Okay. I'd ask that Ms. John to amend her motion to postpone it, but that it be brought up on the first available agenda that Mr. Williams and the bank can come and discuss the matter with us. Okay. I'll amend my motion to postpone it until the Seconded next it. Um, council where it can first available. Motion. First available. Okay. I second that. Okay, discussion? Discussion? Call the roll, please. McCarran? Yes. Russell? Yes. Alberts? Yes. Yonda? Yes. At this time, we'll adjourn as YMA and reconvene as the Yukon City Council. The item number one is a consent docket. This item is placed on the agenda so the City Council, by unanimous consent, can designate those routine items they wish to be approved by one motion. If an item does not meet with the approval of all council members, that item will be heard in regular order. The city manager recommends a motion that will approve A, the minutes of the regular meeting of November the 3rd, 2015, B, payment of material claims in the amount of $338,590.84, C, accepting the Oklahoma Department of Environmental Quality Permit Number SL00009150854, for the construction of approximately 2,440 linear feet of 8 inch sewer line and say that for me, Doug. Appurtenances. Thank you. Appurtenances to the to serve the city of Yukon River Mesa Section 2 Sewer Line Extension Project, Canadian County, Oklahoma. D. Accepting Oklahoma Department of Environmental Quality Permit Number WL00009150855 for the construction of approximately 120 linear feet of six inch and 200, I'm sorry, 2,165 linear feet of eight inch include inch, I'm sorry, water line and appurtenances to serve the city of Yukon River Mesa Addition Section 2 Water Line Extension Project, Canadian County, Oklahoma. <coughs> Excuse me, designating the items on the attached list for technology department is the surplus and authorizing their sale, donation, and trade. And F, setting the date for the next regular council meeting on December the 1st, 2015, 7 p.m. in the council chambers of the Centennial Building, 12 South 5th Street, Yukon, Oklahoma. Do I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Discussion? Discussion? Call the roll, please. Alberts? Yes. Yonda? Yes. McCarran? Yes. Russell? Yes. Next item is item two, and that's consider approving resolution 2015-22, a resolution authorizing the calling and holding of an election in the city of Yukon, Canadian County, Oklahoma, for the purpose of electing one council member from Ward 3 and one council member from Ward 4, four-year terms ending May 2020, with filing period opening 8 a.m. December the 7th, 2015, and closing at 4.30 p.m. December the 9th. 2015. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Discussion? Discussion? Call the roll, please. Yonda? Yes. Russell? Yes. Alberts? Yes. McCarran? Yes. Three is consider approving the agreement for the upgrade of the New World System to the Enterprise ECAD and expenditures of funds in amount of $143,850 to be paid from the master lease purchase agreement as requested by the technology director. Do I have a motion? Motion to approve. Second. Discussion? Discussion? Call the roll, please. McCarran? Yes. Alberts? Yes. Russell? Yes. Yonda? Yes. Four is consider approving an expenditure of funds in the amount of $80,289.64 for a new store storage area network from Presidio, Presidio. Presidio. Presidio excuse me, to be paid from the master lease purchase agreement as requested by the technology director. I have a motion, please. So moved. Second. Discussion? Discussion? Call the roll, please. Russell? Yes. Alberts? Yes. Yonda? Yes. McCarran? Yes. Next item is five, and that's consider approving an expenditure of funds in amount not to exceed $980,379.56 for the purchase of vehicles and equipment as, so, as shown in the attached list for the Assistant City Manager Public Works Police Station Sanitation and Park Maintenance to be paid from the Master Lease, lease Purchase Agreement. Do I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Discussion? Discussion? Call the roll, please. Alberts? Yes. Russell? Yes. Yonda? Yes. McCarran? Yes. Last item is item 
or the next item, I'm sorry, is item six, and that's consider approving resolution 2015-23 resolution declaring the intent to consider an amendment of the Frisco Road Economic Development Project Plan by creating an ad valorem increment district or districts under the Local Development Act directing preparation of the project plan amendments, appointing a revenue committee, directing the revenue committee to make findings as to eligibility and financial impact, if any, on taxing jurisdictions within the district and district and districting the revenue committee, I'm sorry, not districting, directing the revenue committee uh, to make a recommendation with respect to the proposed amendments to the project. Do I have a motion? Motion to approve. Second. Second. Okay, discussion. Grayson, would, would you address the ad valorem, that it, uh, the fact that it would not take away from our schools? Well, it doesn't. Uh, that, right, I know it doesn't. First of all, you can't give away what you don't have. <laughs> right. Uh, you, can't, uh, you can't direct it to go anywhere if, unless there's revenue. Without development, there is no revenue. Uh, so you have to pass the but-for test, but for the development, no uh, revenue will be derived. Um, as far as the this particular item, um, specifically there are two reasons which I uh, delineated in my memo uh, that, uh, first of all, as the master plan has evolved over time, it is anticipated that the area for further to the west will contain more residential and commercial development than retail development. So with that in mind and in order to pay for the improvements necessary to support the residential and the commercial development that will be in that, the mixed use that will be over there, uh, the ad valorem is appropriate for that particular portion of the land. That's two-thirds of it. It all lies within the Banner School. So um, none of the money would have ever come to Yukon to begin with, uh, to the Yukon Public Schools. It would have gone to the dependent school district in Banner. So <coughs> when the development occurs, when the development occurs, then we are anticipating using the ad valorem tax as well as the sales tax that would be created in the entire area to fund the necessary improvements including the Frisco Road interchange as well as impro improvements to Frisco Road. Thank you. Anything else? I, I guess I <laughs> must be my night for questions and stuff for all of us. But I'm curious as this why this is actually on uh, resolution number 2015-23 is on the YEDA agenda for the 19th. The, the, the state law is very specific in the order things must be considered. The first in this particular process is a resolution by the city council. After that, then a review, and, and I think there is a list of those things in your packet as well, but there is a, uh, uh, there is a specific order. This is the first step in that process. Right. It's, it's on the authority agenda simply for informational purposes only. The authority does not have a review role to play in this consideration of whether or not an ad valorem increment district should be added, but obviously the authority will have a role to play as the project gets developed. They will be right. negotiating the development agreements with the developer and assigning um, uh, their budget and, and paying for the improvements. So it's on the authority agenda simply as a discussion and review item. Okay, well, that's what it says, is to review. Right. You know, you just that's why it's on there. It wasn't for them to review first. It came to us first. Correct, because and the council 
the council passes the resolution and then a review committee is formed to consider the issue and the review committee will as you read in the in the item commentary or the agenda right. item uh, oh. the <laughs> review committee will consider whether or not it's appropriate to consider the in increment district and whether or not there is an impact, financial impact, on the other taxing jurisdictions. Will require an amendment uh, to the project plan and to the project budget. And the makeup of the review committee that you're talking about is driven by state statute. And it's and it's a member of the committee from each of the taxing jurisdictions. Yes. Will Which be would be who? It would be um, the city. It would be uh, county. Uh, it would be the um, Voc Tech Center, uh, Voc uh, Canadian Valley Technology oh. Center. Uh, it would be the health department, anyone that's receiving uh, ad valorem taxes on a countywide basis. But only the Banner School, not the only, Yukon Only Public Banner schools. School would not be the Yukon Public Schools. So Banner would have a seat? Yes. And then the mayor submits name to? The, the, mayor, the mayor is the chair of the review committee and then uh, the first meeting of the review committee, uh, you s appoint or select three members at large. Uh, at large to serve on the committee. But I think he actually submits seven names and seven other members select Correct. three. Well, then I guess my question comes is where, what happens at that meeting? Uh, do they have the authority to go in and say, put money here, put money there? No. No, their, on, their only authority is to review the issue and make recommendations that come back to the Planning Commission, and those recommendations then would be forwarded to the Council. What, what kind of recommendations? That's what I yeah. guess I don't understand. So Whether or not the tax increment district should be approved. So tonight or we're if just... If it's warranted. So tonight is all we're doing is forming a committee that will research whether this tax district should be approved. Correct. You're, you're initiating the... Action, process. the process okay. because I, I disagree that it doesn't affect UConn students because the UConn students go to Banner from where I used to live out there at Westport 66 and then they come back to UConn so I do think it affects the UConn students and I understand it's got to be there before it affects them but I do the tax that goes to Banner does not follow the Banner students wherever they choose to go their education that they acquire while they're at Banner follows them to UConn Yes. So it's a committee that would study. Study and make recommendations back to the Planning Commission and to the City Council. So do we have any idea of the economic impact? I mean, do we have what this is going to generate? I mean, what's it? We, we went through that process when we established the TIF district using sales tax, and right. we would start there and, and update, revise, modify, uh, and determine whether there was an impact or not. That's the purpose of forming the committee. Let's say it did have an impact, then where does that go? I mean, they don't have the authority then to transfer money from... No, uh, they, from basically, they basically determine whether there is a substantial impact or not. And those recommendations then come back to the Planning Commission and City Council. And then it's up to right. the City Council to take those recommendations and say yes or no on the increment district. So let's say someone is disadvantaged in there. How does that work? I, I, I'm, trying, I'm trying to get it that one of the things I told you that I was confused about is that if in point of fact they came back and said that we'll pick Banner because it's out there, Banner's disadvantaged. Okay. Now, does that come to the city for us to adjust that financially? Do we have the even have the authority? Well, that's what I'm saying. Do we even have the authority to have an impact? You know, no, you I, don't. You don't. You don't impact their their tax rates. It would just be the simply the the future benefit is is being deferred uh, to the district. Well, but how does the future benefit get there I guess that's what well, yeah, it once, once the TIF district is paid out is that correct yes. is that what we're saying right the TIF district finally gets paid out and that we've paid off all of the obligations under the TIF that's correct then in point of fact that then would become banner school district money or Canadian correct Valley Votech money right now huh? right. wherever it goes right now
right now. And well, of course, it doesn't go. It, I mean, it's a moot point right now because it doesn't go anywhere because it's right. not generating there. Okay. But I'm just saying, why would that committee then have to be there to they, decide they, that? The committee won't be. Uh, the committee's only sole responsibility is to review the issue. Once that this runs the once the recommendations or findings are made, the c review committee is dissolved. So the committee. The committee does the research, which I feel better now knowing that all the different educational institutions are represented in the county. They review it, they formulate a recommendation, and they bring that, the committee brings that back to us. Correct. And we'll act. Correct. Mm -hmm. Through the planning commission. Right. Well, the pla it goes to the planning commission and then to us? Right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I think. Yeah. I, yeah. So that's the formula. Yeah. The co committee does the research, and then they'll bring us the numbers. Of the impact of the proposal potential revenue that it would generate and and i guess along with that would be the impact yes Bill? potential and they, and there may be one or more that feel that they're impacted whether that's true or not but the recommendation comes from the body but i, I what is the remedial i mean what i'm trying to get to is all that information finally comes back and we find out that there's a disparate a disparity that needs to be addressed then we How decide whether we amend it or not at that I point, know. then we decide whether we amend. Correct. We amend the TIF. Yeah, we, right. So this is a bit, it, it just comes back to us. So they're going right. to, what we're going to do is we'll designate. A, so then a we can act, committee. but we can go in then and adjust the TIF. Is that correct? Well, you'll either. You, vote. you will, yes. If, if, if you come back, if the recommendations are to implement a tax, a ad valorem tax district, then the budget would have to be amended to reflect those changes. So you would also approve the project plan and budget for the TIF district. Yeah, so we, the TIF would have to be itself would have to be modified. Not not the TIF itself, but the financing, the project plan, and the budget for the TIF. And, okay. But there are rules in place for allowing us to do that. Then yes. to go back and amend the TIF. Yes. Yes, that's part of the process. Okay. Right. That seems correct. I think that seems reasonable. I mean, because yeah, the I, research I, it goes I mean, out. I, didn't, I, I mean, I really didn't yeah. get that from yeah. the literature at yeah, all. I didn't. I didn't well, well, I thought we were voted on it. Period, and it was oh. done and over with. No, I'm sorry. No, that's no. that's what it looks like. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's the I way. Mean, that, the verbiage there. Once again, it's a transfer of information. Well, well, but if you read, it's a resolution of intent. The resolution, the resolution is to form the committee. Yeah, the resolution this, is not to approve the in increment district. Right. But it also allows us to hear from the other people that are affected by this, and they they may say, hey, it's better to go ahead and build it and designate it over here, knowing in the end we'll ultimately get it back well, maybe 20 years from now. But everything that is already designated as a district for... It won't change the boundaries of the district. Right, and the ad valorem then eventually will go to those people. Correct. But I'm, I'm still, what would we do to the TIF then? To adjust that, I, and that's what I'm trying to get no, clear you, in my mind. I'm no, no, you, you're not, you're not adjusting <coughs> the TIF boundaries. You're just no, no, adjusting not, the not, budget for. That's that correct. The concern, the concern here is that you need a certain amount of revenue to pay for the public improvements that are necessary to support that's, the project. That's right. So you've got to match the two together. If you think, if you think your public improvements are going to cost you twenty-five million dollars, then you've got to make find a way. To generate twenty-five million dollars in revenue, right. that's that's the only purpose of the well, is several purposes of the TIF, but financially, that's the purpose of the TIF is to be able to capture that money so you can pay for the improvements. Pay for the improvements. Once the improvements are paid for, once you've raised that money, the TIF goes away. The you set a you set a maturity date of the of the district at fifteen, twenty, twenty-five years, right? Whatever right. it is, but in in reality, the TIF is extinguished the minute you cross over your established budget as far as revenue if that's 10 or 12 years mm -hmm. it goes away then so it yeah. <laughs> and we're not establishing we're not establishing a district tonight what we're establishing is a committee that will go out and gather information based upon what they gather they will submit it to the planning commission that's right, right. The planning commission will then evaluate it and based upon what they do they will send something to us a recommendation to us so we're not changing anything we're not establishing anything as no. all we're doing is this is a research we're researching yeah. whether we should would come by and could conceivably bring an amendment to the TIF to us correct if it pays off earlier if it pays off later so right. at a later date right. we'll, if we approve this tonight we're sending we're going to establish a committee to do the research and then it will yeah. come back to us later 
So yeah, and you probably won't see it for about three months. Yes, at least. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want some numbers. Yeah, we'll yeah. see. It. We'll give you some numbers. Okay. Please. Thank you, Larry. Appreciate your patience tonight and all the good discussion. It is. I mean, and again, that's. I mean, when you consider all of, the, if you take the exchange, the city hall, and the park, we've talked about two hundred million dollars worth of stuff tonight. True. Huh? Total project cost. Yeah. Yeah. Total project cost of a hundred and fifty to two hundred million. That's intimidating. So we appreciate. So, or I appreciate, I keep saying we, I mean, I can't, I don't think everybody up here appreciates it, but I do. All right. There's signs of that all around us. So call the roll, please. Any further discussion? Further discussion? Call the roll, please. Russell? <coughs> yes. Yonda? Yes. Alberts? Yes. McCarran? Yes. <coughs> if it please, Mr. Bottom, city manager's report item seven. Uh, first of all, we'd like to talk about sales tax, and we, again this month, would like to talk about it. Our increase was 10.92% over the same month last year. That takes our total year-to-date increase to 15.02% over the uh, uh, year-to-date last year. Uh, good, um, good numbers. Um, what goes up will come down. Uh, I really anticipate that these numbers will stay strong uh, through the uh, February reporting period. I am very concerned uh, beginning in March uh, simply because that is when we're going to catch up on a lot of what was new in the city uh, that we're collecting sales tax from. Just a concern, not, not a prediction, not a guarantee, just simply a concern that uh, come March uh, we could have uh, uh, some, uh, we, we're not going to see double digit increases. That's, I, I think that, you know, we've been through five reporting periods this month and uh, four reporting periods last year, uh, all in double digit increases. And I think we can get spoiled uh, thinking that we're always going to have double digit increases. Remember that our budget was built on a 3% increase. <laughs> we have a little extra money. Yeah, yes. and we're, we're banking it. Uh, a report on the big junk uh, recycling event. We had much better participation in this fall event than we did in the spring event. Uh, 233 people uh, saw fit to come and see us last Saturday. We collected 134 tires, 200 gallons of used oil, 30 gallons of antifreeze, 18 TVs, 15 refrigerators, and 60 cubic yards of scrap metal, all within about a six-hour period on, Saturday, on uh, last Saturday. Additionally, as it relates to uh, sanitation services, uh, right now and through December the 4th, we are in our uh, fall leaf bag curbside collection process. Again, that runs through December the 4th. You can place the bags at the curb at your regular tr on your regular trash day, and there is no limit as to the number of bags that you can put out at the curb. Um, Pam was here earlier. She left me a couple of notes. Uh, the Main Street mob is November the 19th at Teal Turtle at 5 p.m. Costs you $20 to, uh, spending at Teal Turtle. Uh, to go to the Main Street Mob, it really is a lot of fun. If you haven't been or have a ch haven't had a chance, you need to go to the Main Street um, Mob. Also, on the 25th is the Main Street uh, Lunch Mob. That will be at Carlitos at 1130. Uh, the Shop Small Saturday is all day on November the 28th. And then December the 3rd, the Christmas Open House all over from 5 to 8 p.m. all downtown come and support your downtown merchants. We are continuing to be busy uh, starting this Saturday. Uh, we have Chill Your Cheeks 5K Run, the Jingle Walk, Kris Kringle Carnival, and the opening of Christmas in the Park. Uh, this year, uh, every light that we turn on will be an LED light. Uh, we're very pleased about that particularly from the power consumption part. Every light that we turn on will be 
uh, LED. And then Friday, December the 4th, the Yukon uh, community, uh, the city of Yukon Community Coffee will be at City Hall. Uh, people show up to start drinking coffee about 7.45. Introductions begin at 8.30. It's always a well-attended event. I hope that you can put it on your calendar and be there. That is uh, Friday, December the 4th. The Mayor's Christmas Party for Kids is on uh, December the 5th. That's Saturday, December the 5th as well as the uh, Santa Calling, which is uh, you need to pre-register at the community center. That's on December the 12th from 11 to 3. Lots of stuff going on in Yukon over the uh, next few weeks. Uh, additionally, every year, uh, and Mayor, I know you live over in that area, but uh, it is important to thank the people that live in the area of Chisholm Trail Park, all of that area, because they are at least three nights a week inconvenienced terribly by an influx of people in traffic all over that area. We want to thank them for their patience. We appreciate it. It's a great event for the city, but I think it should not go unnoticed about there is a lot of traffic over there in that area. So uh, we want everybody to be aware of that. Uh, we are doing our best to come up with another uh, traffic plan that will hopefully alleviate not only the problem during Christmas in the park, the lights, and that particular portion of the traffic, but also the uh, drop-off and pick-up times at Shedak Elementary School on Holly. Uh, that is uh, there's a lot of people that stop in the street, block the street, uh, both ways, and uh, we're trying to figure out a way to uh, alleviate those issues at Sheedeck Elementary. Uh, finally, the, the last thing is a, uh, a comment that I wrote in, the, uh, in my memo that I attached to you, and that is that um, we uh, finished our... Uh, as a preamble to that, um, we finished our audit for this year. Uh, we are due next Monday to have our exit interview. Uh, they, the auditors uh, have completed all the work, the financial uh, uh, advisors that we have, they've completed all their work, and we once again would anticipate a totally clean audit and uh, a very good financial picture for the city. We, with the support of the council, uh, beginning over three years ago, have been positioning ourselves to take advantage of market opportunities that exist today. And that includes the refinancing of most of our revenue bonds, uh, taking it from a 4% rate to a 2% rate, our term from a 15-year term to a 7.5-year term, and we saved uh, not only annual uh, debt service money, but we saved an additional $3.1 million for the taxpayers. We also did that very same thing on our GO bonds, saving the people money and uh, reducing our rate. Additionally, uh, we have had our bonds rated by Standards & Poor's our bond rating came out at a double A minus and stable, which is a remarkable bond rating for a community of our size. I don't know of any others in the entire state, much less in the entire region that can tell you that same story. We've done all that while at the same time increasing our debt coverage ratio, which is the amount of revenue necessary to service debt from a bank qualified requirement of 1.5% or 1.5 to 1, 1 point, what, a dollar and 50 cents of revenue all uh, necessary for every dollar of debt service to where our debt coverage ratio today available for debt service is 4.03 to 1. Again, a very remarkable position to find ourselves in. And it is because of the support of the council and the movements that you have taken and voted on previously that we are able to consider all of the improvements and all of the projects 
that are before you tonight and in the future. So uh, you, you should pat yourself on the back because you supported it, it got done, and the city is much better for those actions. With that, I'll close my report and stand ready for your questions. Thank you, sir. Questions? Questions? Next item, new business. Council discussion, Ms. Yonda. Uh, well, that was a great report, a financial report, and the city of Yukon should be very proud of that. And uh, wishing everyone a happy Thanksgiving, and I'd like to encourage everyone to shop Yukon. Thank you. Mr. McCarran. Well, once again, uh, we've had wonderful, wonderful year. We've had a <clears throat> good discussion tonight as well. I'm very proud of the discussion we had this evening. I really want to point out Lori Adams has uh, done a good job over there and in the absence of Frosty uh, certainly coming in and, uh, and having him recognized tonight was an important thing and I think that's pretty cool. I really do, you know. Uh, it's not very eloquent but it's still pretty cool. Uh, Pam and Larry, uh, I want to uh, congratulate both of them for the Main Street stuff. Pam has been uh, really outstanding. I think I see things almost every day on our main street that are getting better. I've had people from out of town <coughs> come through and actually notice the signage and the, you know, and that we paint our, some of our stuff black on the back of the signs and other good things that they said, you know, that, that really relate to a quality town. So with that, uh, you know, uh, once again, uh, everybody have a wonderful Thanksgiving and, and a Merry Christmas. I think the season's on. Thank you. And, and I probably should have done this at the first of the meeting, but I, I think that just maybe if we pause for just just 15 seconds of silence over the deal in, in Paris and France, we uh, got a, an email today from the National League of Cities just encouraging us to think about and, and pray for and care. So let's just let's give ourselves 15 minutes and think about those people in, in Paris and France right now. Well, I, and I think that we're very fortunate. We're very blessed to live in a, in a great community. And I mean, that always, the things like that, it shook us when Murrah happened and when 9 11 and, and when France. So I think that that's a constant reminder that we need to be vigilant, even here in our own community, about different things or when we travel and things like that. So. Um, Richard Russell. <laughs> I wasn't done. Oh, I had a lot. Guys, I've got war and peace. These are my notes tonight to talk on, so. I won't be long. We've been long enough tonight, but <clears throat> great tax thank report, you. manager's report. Thank you. Uh, I want to thank the city for all their hard work. I say this every time, but thank you, Mr. Corn, because your guys are everywhere, and that's what we need. Thank you a lot for that, and happy Thanksgiving to everyone. Thank you for being here tonight. Richard, I've got, I usually check them off, and I apologize. I just, I apologize. I'm so hoarse, I can't talk right now. <laughs> Thank you for your comments. And also, we, uh, a group of us went over to the National League of Cities and had a nice uh, time over in Nashville, and I think learned some good things. Um, I spent a lot of time on this agenda this time with a couple of things. So I, I've got some information I want to give to Grayson about. It, it's I'm back to the health kick, the obesity with kids and stuff like that. There's some really good information that I hope that we can use. And not just with kids, but adults as well. Um, there's some staggering statistics that I'll bring and try to share with you all the next meeting about obesity and how it affects. I think 20 some percent of healthcare costs have to deal with obesity. And you know, it's something that we struggle with in our budget every single time. I'm, I'm proud of Grayson and, and staff that we do advanced health screenings here in, in the city. And I think that's being very proactive and helping people discover and find out about their health. And I would encourage the community uh, but I've uh, picked up some ideas out there where maybe we can involve more of the community and help to make our community even more healthy. Um, <clears throat> and again, thank you for everything that's going on in Yukon. If you can't find something to do in town in the month of, in this next 45 days, you're just not looking very hard. And thank you, Grayson, for rem remembering the people around the park. And I live there, you're right, but we enjoy all the cars. It's, it's fun to see all the different people drive by and, and do be patient. And then lastly, uh, you know, I, I appreciate tonight. I, I live in Yukon for one reason, because I want to. 
that's it. I, I mean, I like it. I love the town. And I'm passionate about it, Grayson, just like you are. And I think sometimes that, that you know, but I'm a person that believes that adversity creates opportunity. And just because we're here today, and it's not that, and I want you all to understand, I don't disagree that what we need to do, but I just want to make sure that we're fully informed and that we think outside the box and we explore all the different opportunities. So I want to thank you two men for what you do for the community. We really appreciate it. And I don't want to forget all the staff. I mean, because, but for every one of you all that were honored tonight and, and thought of, but for you all, it wouldn't be so easy for us. And we wouldn't even have 15% increase in revenue to argue over. Or we wouldn't have street lights up and down Main Street. We wouldn't be buying new vehicles and things. I mean, that's because of you, and, and I mean, if you want to see a change, go take some pictures around the community, drive around, take a roll of film, that doesn't exist, get your digital camera and go take some pictures now, and then look 10 years, because it will be amazing. It, it's The growth is so slow, but we are about to experience some great and wonderful changes. And I personally want to make sure for each and every one of you all that I do the best job possible to make sure this is a great... It's already the greatest place to live, but I want it to continue to be great, and I want it to continue to be better. So thank you all for your patience this evening, everything that you do, and your continued hard work and dedication. Happy Thanksgiving with no business before the council. We stand adjourned. <laughs>